Good morning, everybody. Let's do likewise, please, on Mara Official. Let's start uh, sharing the live broadcast. Everybody who's coming in, Durban is in the house. Uh, Zambia is in the house. Definitely Zambia is waking up very early in the morning. Hallelujah. As you are coming in, as you're announcing yourself, please help me write in the comment section, watch your decisions. We're going to pray the word for us this morning is watch your decisions. We are going to pray and we're going to look at the scripture. We're going to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say this morning hallelujah glory to the living god hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus somebody type if you've introduced the country where you are seeing me from where you are tuning in from whatever platform that you're in whatever um whether it is on facebook or on um, youtube please put in the comment section watch your decisions hallelujah we need to watch our decisions amen come on somebody you're watching your decisions from south africa limpopo i see you zambia i've seen you i have seen you uk i have seen you australia i have seen everybody from usa who is in here i have seen those of us i encourage you to get a journal i encourage you to get a pen we are going to be shooting straight today we are going to be looking at the word of god and also looking at the decisions that we are making and how the word of god advises us to make the right decisions come on somebody we are going to be praying along and we're going to pray that god helps us to make the right decisions in Jesus mighty name thank you Holy Spirit thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah 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 thank you Holy Spirit hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Watch your decisions this morning. Let's watch our decisions. It is no doubt that we have to make the right decisions and what better way to make the right decisions when we invite the Holy Spirit. Father, I just want to invite you this morning. I just want to say you are God and without you, there is no other God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, we ask that you uh, become part of this service this morning and you give us your word and you give us the matching orders my god in jesus mighty name bless every single person who will be participating father god meet them at the point of their needs and help them to make the right decisions and as they are praying my god father i call that the answers are going to be yes and amen their promises are yes and amen father god in jesus mighty name father i pray for myself i cover myself with the blood of jesus i ask that you help me uh, articulate that which you want to see happen in their lives and let everything that comes out of my mouth be all of you and none of me in Jesus mighty name and the saints of God said amen as you are typing in the comment section to let those who are just joining us we are talking about watching our decisions in life we make various decisions hallelujah it is true that when we make those decisions some people do consult God some people don't consult God hallelujah and we are going to ask the Lord and say God be in every decision that we are making because every decision has a repercussion talk to me somebody God is very much interested in us making the right choices hallelujah God is interested in making the right choices hallelujah he wants you to make the right decision so that you do not have a life of regret that you don't look back and say should I did I make the right decision should I go back and all oh, and, and and do something else hallelujah a, a friend of mine said yesterday stop being like lot if you made a decision you made a decision and you move on and you say you must develop thick skin and you keep moving god doesn't just want us to make the right decision but he wants to guide us hallelujah god also wants us to be guided in terms of how we are making the decision god knows what is best for us and he knows what is his plan for our lives and he wants to reveal that plan for us hallelujah talk to me somebody we must clearly understand what the bible teaches in terms of of, uh, making the right decisions we must understand what is the guidance of God concerning anything that we are doing in life talk to me somebody hallelujah so all our decisions we need to watch and make the right decisions talk to me somebody 
are we tracking together this morning so the decision that we are going to make or decisions that we are going to make in this path of life uh, they will require immediate action thank you so much hallelujah they will require immediate action hallelujah and to successfully make sure that we 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 sail uh, through life or we scale through any of uh, the decisions that we are going to make in life we must clearly understand what the bible teaches concerning uh, and and what the bible guides us in terms of the spirit from the wisdom of the holy spirit what is the wisdom of the holy spirit concerning any particular issue right unfortunately sometimes we make the mistake of setting god aside because some people think that they have arrived and they know better and they can do certain things and exclude god and that is not how things will be the apostle paul encourages us he says do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving we should let our requests be made known to god hallelujah those questions that the other people are asking of you questions that people are asking in your family that need to be decided hallelujah there is a there is a a, 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 a consultation point that you cannot miss so we're going to be going through different prayers this morning different things that are happening in our lives where we need the decision of God. Some people need decisions this morning in terms of what is their next destination in life. So Father, I pray right now, just from the right back, the, 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 the go point right now, Lord, that you give us peace, my God, that at the end of this broadcast, somebody who was facing to make a big decision in their life, <coughs> Father God, they will receive the peace that they need. And Father God, if that peace does not come to them, Father God, they will not make that decision and go to the wrong de decision or the wrong path. Amen. Father, I pray for peace on everyone's heart today. I pray only that God, you provide that type of peace that will strengthen them, that will wash out any restlessness, that will wash out any anxiety, a peace that will help them from any form of uneasiness in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, guys. I need you to share the live broadcast so that I don't go too deep in and people lose me because by the time we pray and people don't have the foundation, then I would not have achieved my objectives this morning and I would not have achieved what the Holy Spirit needs to see. So make sure you are sharing in your WhatsApp groups, you are sharing on your timelines, you are sharing in your uh, Facebook groups as well. Let's make sure that there is a link that is provided in the WhatsApp group so that people can catch up and catch on in very quickly. Hallelujah. So this morning, Father, we ask you to give us the victory, Lord. Give us the victory, Lord. Give us the victory. Move us away from anything that the enemy might confuse us about, anything that may worry our minds that can um, make us take the wrong decisions. Father, we ask you that you fill us with your peace. We ask you that you fill us with your conviction in any decision that we are about to take in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we also pray for wisdom this morning, Father God. The Bible says that if you lack any wisdom, let him ask of God. Anybody who lacks wisdom, you don't know whether you are going to have the right wisdom up applied in a particular decision. There's an invitation in the book of James. He says, if you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Hallelujah. So right now, Spirit of God, I ask that you fill us with the wisdom that we need to make the right decisions. Somebody is having to make a decision in their career, in their marriage, in their business, in their finances, in their academics, in ministry. Father, give us wisdom. Come on. Thank you so much, Fortune Online, for praying along with me. Make sure that every declaration, every prayer that I'm making, make sure you are typing it in the comment section. Let it resonate in your spirit, man. Let it take root in your belly. Let it take root in your heart and in your mind so that you are in sync with what the word of God is saying. Talk to me, somebody. So God, I ask that you give us the wisdom of God to choose rightly, to choose the right way in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, I also, Lord, pray that any decision that we are going to take is going to be aligned with the will of God. Talk to me, somebody. Father, the Bible says, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. As Jesus also so handed over his will and in some decisions we know that you do not want us to take any particular decision or go in a particular direction and Jesus had to submit his will and therefore God we also submit our will to you and say Lord it might not be an easy decision we might not want to take that decision we may not want to come out of that situation 
but you are the God that knows that that thing is destroying us. Father, we are saying this morning, nevertheless, at your will, my God, let your will be done. Nevertheless, my Father, let your will be done. Oh, Lord, my Father, we ask for forgiveness, my God, for any times we have missed it and we did things that were not aligned to your will. We were not aligned to your perfect will and we found ourselves in challenges, my God. Father, because of sinfulness or because of selfishness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we try to make our will to prevail over your will. Father, we repent of those situations in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, help us to honestly believe and trust in you always. And Lord, because we know you are a father that is loving, that is caring, that is always going to direct us in the right steps in Jesus' mighty name. We say this morning, let your will be done in our lives as we obey your word entirely and not in parts. Father God, we will obey your word entirely. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. But Father, as I track through and I hear what the Spirit of the Lord says, Father, I want to thank you for humility. Father, thank you for a humble spirit upon everybody who is listening to the sound of my voice, upon myself. Father, I pray for a humble spirit this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of God says the meek will hide, will he guide in judgment. Hallelujah. Help us to be meek this morning. The Bible says the meek will he hide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. So Father, we come humbling ourselves before you. We ask you, Lord, that you will teach us your ways as we humble ourselves, as we as we ask you to help us do, to be meek, my God, and to guide us in the paths that we are traveling in. In Jesus' mighty in, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we ask, Lord, uh, that you bring a humble spirit upon us right now in Jesus' mighty name, that we will be wholly dependent on your life, on, on, on everything that you will guide us on, my God. In that humility, we will not miss it in the life decisions that we will be taking in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we decrease so that you may increase in us in Jesus' mighty name. We ask that you grant us your guidance and through your guidance, my God, uh, we will... Uh, grant um, humble obedience and we accept it in Jesus mighty name. Father, let your word that will lead us to that humble position, that humble spirit Father God, continue to teach us in Jesus mighty name. Father, I pray for every single person that is on this broadcast for a spirit of discernment and Father, we receive and Lord, we ask uh, humbly oh God, give us that spirit of discernment let somebody who has not been making discernments in the right way Father, you said the sons of Issachar had the discernment of the times they could understand what season they're in and what decision to make. Father, give us the discernment to open the right doors, uh, to pursue the right careers, to pursue the right individuals, right associations in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, as we pray, Father, your word says, but the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And right now, my God, I decree and I declare that there is going to be a spiritual discernment on every single person that is listening to the sound of my voice. I pray for that spiritual discernment, my God, so that we do not under we, we understand the things of God, so that we do not find ourselves making foolish decisions. Father, I ask that you open up the eyes of every single person who's at the sound of my voice uh, for anything that is hindering them from attaining their spiritual progress, my God. Uh, 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 open up their eyes, my God. Open up their spiritual eyes. Uh, show them that thing that has been holding them back in Jesus' mighty name. Help them to make the right and bold decisions as they discern the next steps uh, that they need to take in their lives. Uh, in Jesus' mighty name, Father, we thank you. Father, I pray for instruction. Father, I pray, Lord, that your spirit of instruction will come upon every single person that is at the sound of my voice. Your word says in the book of Psalms, my God, that you will instruct us and teach us in the way that we should go, and you will guide us with our eyes, my God. Father, we ask the same prayer this morning. We are saying, Lord, instruct us and teach us in the way that we should go. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you so much, Fortunel Online, for doing the most. Thank you so much. I see you guys on 
and marrow official, you are praying along. May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord give you instructions this morning. Facebook, I see you. YouTube, I see you. My God, my God. Let the Lord guide you into the right decisions. Father God, instruct us to not necessarily choose what we want to do, but what we, you want us to do, my God. It is not what we want to do, but we want to choose that which is that you want us to do. In Jesus' mighty name, give us help, O oh God, and guide us so that we will not be strayed while we are making life's decisions. Holy Spirit, teach us your word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you because we know you are the God and the foundation of all wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and you have the ability to view life from a comprehensive view from that bed's eye view God we might not be seeing certain things but we know that you've got the full picture of our life and you can see ahead where we are going in Jesus mighty name father we thank you we see only in part but you see fully in the mighty name of Jesus Christ you are the God that sees all and my God I thank you Lord that every single person that is on this broadcast my God will begin to involve you in their prayers will begin to involve you in their decision making as they make those decisions and that will ensure their life success in Jesus mighty name God bless you Anna in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hallelujah father help us to understand the choices that we are making more clearly help us my God that when we seek your face oh God when we seek your face Lord to make any significant decision and my God you will step up and you will show us I want to share with you saints that there is profit and I want to say to somebody who's listening to the sound of my voice that there is definite reward and there is a profit in serving God there is a profit in involving him in making decisions some people think that they will only come to God when they are thinking something is spiritual that but the very fact that you have to make certain life-changing decisions is proof that you actually are making a spiritual decision. Everything is spiritual because where you are currently and the situation you are in now, it is because of the decisions that you made. And if you did not involve the spirit or realm or the spirit God that leads you, the spirit of God that leads you in that decision, you wouldn't bear be where you are currently at the current moment. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19, he says, I call heaven and earth as a witness today against you. I have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may live so i want to challenge you and say that you go with this scripture and the scripture challenges you and says that god has put before you life and death and he's asking you to choose life so that your descendants may benefit from the decisions that you're making many children are suffering at the current moment because their parents choose the wrong decisions many children are suffering because their parents did not make the choices to save or or, or, or to, 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 to live a, a righteous life. Maybe they, their parents became alcoholics and they, be, as a result, found themselves in the street and without options of life. But that is not going to be a portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we understand this morning that anything that we are going to do, we cannot do without you. My God, I read an article the other day. There were celebrities who grew up and, and they were telling of their stories and they were saying how they grew up poor and 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 people were looking at their circumstances and how the life translated for them years later hallelujah and um one of the people had a net worth uh, in terms of um financial currency of about i think it was five million dollars uh, hallelujah hallelujah and this person was born to a mother who was pregnant while she was in prison the gentleman's name was called a uh, miesta leighton miesta he was born to a mother who was in prison imagine that so nobody can say my circumstances are the worst. Maybe your mother was never even in prison, but this is somebody whose mother was in prison and born in prison, but still choose to make it and became a celebrity and became renowned. So if somebody else can make it, if somebody can make it from a, a home, from where the, 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 they, they have no mother, they have no father, they don't know who their father is, they don't know who their mother is. Some of them are coming from backgrounds where there is just so much alcoholism and they are still able to make it you do not have the decency or or 
or the luxury rather I must put it to say you're gonna blame your parents that your parents didn't give you the options yes you don't have the luxury sometimes to choose options and to be given options but you're gonna have to make a decision and say I'm gonna stand I'm gonna make the right decisions I'm gonna find a way God always makes a way despite your background despite where you are coming from talk to me somebody God bless you sis Janice in Jesus Janice sorry in Jesus mighty name hallelujah the mother was pregnant she was in prison and she had to give birth to her in a hospital and nest her only a halfway she was not there the whole time to give her guidance hallelujah and she was returned to prison you might have had the luxury of having your mother even for six months or for six years my question to you is this morning is what have you done concerning your decision come on somebody so whatever your upbringing whatever your background to be you you decide what you will be worth and what you decide what value you're going to add you decide how you're going to live your life whether you're going to be a solution giver you decide that you're going to answer the call and say yes lord use me you decide that you're going to find a solution where it seems like there's no solution you decide that you're going to decide that you're going to see the possibilities in god because god says there is nothing impossible with him you decide that you're not going to hang around with friends that keep on suppressing you and telling you that it cannot be done because of your background talk to me somebody you can make a choice today that no matter li what the life uh, situation is no matter what the situation you were born into no matter what the situation you are currently in, right now, as a result of your decision and your choices, life is going to change and be better. Contrary to whatever the belief of some people may be around you, contrary to the decisions that others are taking, you don't have to be a copycat of those decisions. My God, contrary to anybody who telling you that there's no chance that you're going to make it, you're going to determine what is your decision. Hallelujah. Somebody tell your neighbor one more time in the comment section and say what your decision decisions watch your decisions in Jesus mighty name you can tell what people believe through the values that you are seeing in them you can tell what people believe through the the values that they adopt hallelujah the decisions they make hallelujah the way you are living your life currently tells me exactly what your decisions are all made up of or how you go about making your decisions and I repeat it again I say you are where you are concerning the decisions that you made you cannot continue to blame anybody you have to take responsibility of the decisions that you are going to make from now on in Jesus mighty name you need to understand that your future is ultimately determined by the choices that you are currently making right now you don't have the luxury and say I'm gonna sleep today off and tomorrow I will make the right decisions come on somebody we're not copying out of this thing we are not cowards we're gonna make the right decision whatever decision you make is due to what you permit in your life so who you permit and what you permit in your life will speak to the decisions that you are making and it will speak to the fruits that we are seeing in your life. My question is, do you like the fruits that you are seeing in your life? If you don't like the fruits that you are seeing in your life, who have you permitted in your life? If you don't like the fruits that you are seeing in your life, and my question is, what have you permitted in your life? What have you opened up your ears to? Are you listening to negative talk? Are you listening to useless talk? Are you, you listening to complaining talk? Talk to me, somebody. Don't complain. If you don't like what you're seeing, don't complain because it is all about what you have permitted. Hallelujah. If it's yielding negative returns in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it is what you have permitted. Can somebody hold your, your neighbor accountable and tag them and say, watch your decisions. We're going to hold each other accountable this morning. Watch your decisions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. One of the biggest challenges that you will face in life, as I said before, is the decisions that you will make. Hallelujah is the right decisions that you need to make. You need to be careful about the decisions you make today because they will definitely produce in your future. Whether it produces assets or liabilities is up to you. The reason why a lot of people find themselves in debt situations is because they permitted certain things. It is your liabilities and your asset situation, whether your balance sheet is balancing or not, it is because of the decisions that you made. If you decide to live beyond your means, the decisions will reflect 
reflect on whether or not you are living as a liability and everything in your life becomes a liability. It becomes a struggle in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh my God. We strike through the scriptures and we see Abraham's decision uh, with the suggestion of his wife. When, when, when the wife said to, to him, he said, sleep with your maid. It resulted in an Ishmael being born. Come on, somebody. So sometimes even as spouses, they can make you take the wrong decisions. That is why I say before you marry somebody, make sure you are checking their, their you know, observe the red flags. Make sure you are checking out how they are making decisions because that will give you an indication whether this person is going to lead the family in the right way. Some people have taken out loans because they are trying to bail family members. They are making, they are taking out loans because they are saying it's my family member, I need to help them. But then you find yourself in a sea of debt. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you are married to somebody who is extravagant, who, who likes uh, spending money on expenses. The person does not save. The person wants to live beyond their means. The person does not understand that this thing does not equate. You cannot continue to live beyond the means of your income and think that is going to be sustainable. At some point, that thing will catch up with you. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody say in the comment section, I will change the decisions that I make. I will make the right decisions. Come on, somebody. Tap your neighbor behind the back. If you don't like your neighbor, tap yourself and touch yourself and agree with yourself and says, I will watch my decisions from today in Jesus' mighty name. I will watch my decisions because of the decision that was made by Abraham. Even until this day, what has happened prophetically is that that caused the liability of the Palestinians who are now still today still fighting the Israelites the promised seed and the asset of Abraham for land all these things that are happening around the world they are prophetic fulfillments of what was said in scripture so even in the Bible itself the decision from the father of our faith Abraham himself this is what has resulted in people fighting for the land in in in, in that country in Jesus mighty name I pray for you and I decree and I declare you will take the right decisions in Jesus mighty name my God never make any permanent decision in a temporal situation sometimes because of pressure we move too fast and take decisions in temporary situations and we don't realize that there's a permanent repercussions and there is a permanent consequence that is going to happen that moment when you decide that it's okay to deviate that is okay to co commit a sin the, the, that moment when you decide that I'm just gonna fall this one time and nobody can see me what you do is in the darkness, my darling, it will surely come out in the public. Many people have made future decisions in temporary situations. That one night stand that you, you thought was going to probably work out to something bigger and greater and suddenly you were in a one night stand and you found yourself pregnant and you found that you don't even know who the father of the child is and you find that the father is gone at that moment. What was that? It was a permanent decision in a temporary situation where you were just hyped up and you were just overtaken and overwhelmed. There are people who are taking permanent decisions in temporary situations situations. Let me give this illustration. You are going through something very difficult in your life currently. Your finances are not going the way you anticipated. But here comes God. My God. My God. He presents the situation to you and you are thinking, I'm going to take up this loan and it's going to bail me out. But it's one loan on top of the other. You are taking this decision and thinking, I'm going to be out of this loan in six months. And six years later, we are still talking about the same thing. But now it has quadrupled because you didn't take even the moment to read up the contract that you signed. You signed on terms and conditions that compounded the interest. Now you are in even more debt. Come on, somebody. There are four, ty four types that you, of decisions or four times that you will have to make a decision. Hallelujah or the four times that you shouldn't make a decision. Never make a decision when it's based on other people's opinion. People can advise you, but there is a time when you need to set aside your time space with God and you call, you you say, God, this decision needs to be mine. You need to be accountable for your own decision. This is what I learned about this, this principle. A friend of mine, I remember she was in an abusive relationship for a long time, and this was a woman of God. And I kept on saying, why are you not leaving this man 
and do you not realize that you are, you are you are you are you are you are going to die and for many years and she kept on saying to me when the time is right when the lord has released me i will live this man and this was a principle that my mother even taught me said fortune whenever two people are involved you can give advice but you need to step act back and step out because it doesn't matter how much you want to lose sweat how much you're going to advise the person if the person is addicted oh my god god is going to give god has given me a message that i'm going to download heavily on friday night at 12 midnight where i'm going to be talking about slaves that that love their chains because there are people who have enslaved themselves and they love their chains and i'm going to be talking about the repercussions and i'm going to be conducting deliverance for those people because there are people who love their chains there are people who put themselves in chains talk to me somebody let me not get ahead of myself to friday but there are people who will stay in abusive relationships even if they're dying but what i was taught as a principle and then what i've discovered through the years is that people will stay in abusive relationships it does not matter how much you pray for them it doesn't matter how much you tell them and advise them and show them you will give them evidence until that person makes a personal decision they will not leave talk to me somebody then you've got the opposite side of other people who are in decisions that are very terrible and and they take opinions of other people and those opinions are equally wrong those opinions give get them into more trouble hallelujah i'll give an illustration of this when i was starting to date there was a gentleman that came to me a very lovely gentleman and he wanted he asked for my hand in marriage hallelujah i don't know what's happening with our views i don't know if i've said please guys don't use crying emojis i need to make sure that i'm teaching this word let's keep on sharing again network is bad oh my god are we load shedding oh i bind the spirit of load shedding i don't know what's going on but please if you get kicked out come back again i don't know what's going on but i hope that my network will hold on but as i was giving this illustration that sometimes when you are to choose the person you are to marry make sure that it is your decision it's not somebody else's decision talk to me somebody let it be not your friend's decision and i realized that i made a wrong decision because i refused this person's hand in marriage and i was given the wrong information wrong evidence and because of the rod oh my goodness oh jesus network lost my god um moderators can you kindly tell me there's too many um too many um same um facebook are we still okay facebook can you still see me i'm getting a lot of messages that network is lost if i get more comments on network i'm gonna restart on tiktok but i will still keep the broadcast on um facebook and on youtube not net no network everywhere do you guys want me to restart the live again do you want me to restart the live Maybe we get a better a better reception because I see the numbers are dropping. Help me, Jesus. Okay, guys, I'm going to restart the, 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 the broadcast, okay, everywhere. I'm going to start. I'm going to restart. Okay, so f Facebook, uh, you lost me on TikTok. Okay, guys, please go to my YouTube channel and make sure that you are on the YouTube in case you get lost. I'm going to restart for those who are on TikTok. If you don't have the, just go to the handle and go uh, and look for Fortune L online. Those of you who are on um, uh, Mara official, please look for Fortune L online on uh, YouTube and make sure you come on or even on Facebook. Okay, past the fortune or fortune, the web fortune L online. Okay, so guys, we're going to YouTube, but I'm gonna restart the TikTok as well. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. I'm very sorry for that. I'm very, very, very sorry, very, very sorry, very sorry. Let's restart this again. Let's restart this again. Let's restart this again, and hopefully this will help. I'm going to stop on Mara Official just briefly. The devil is a liar. Mm. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. We are going to make it. We are going to make it this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, um, um, guys, I'm going to uh, continue uh, while we wait for those who are on TikTok. They will catch up with us. So um, I'm very sorry about that. Um, I see you guys. Masiko, welcome back, guys. Everybody on TikTok, welcome back. Thank you so much for coming back online. I'm sorry. I don't know what, uh, what kind of network disruption is that because the network still kept being stable on Facebook and on YouTube. Hallelujah. 
The devil does not want me to, to preach this message clearly, but the devil is a liar. We're going to continue. Okay, guys, in case you lose, this is why sometimes I keep on repeating the YouTube link and the Facebook link that whatever happens, if you get lost on TikTok, you can jump on, on the other platforms, but let's see how it goes. Okay. So you guys on TikTok will be helping me share as well. And um, you will be tapping on the screen. Let's get back that momentum one more time. So as I was saying, I was giving an illustration and I was saying that there are four times when you shouldn't make a decision where you need to step back when you need to stop and say before i make this decision not only do i need to consult myself it's when other people's in opinion is involved you can't make a decision that is based on other people's opinion because you can't blame them tomorrow tomorrow if you make the wrong decision and 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 the illustration that i was making uh before we had um the the challenges the technical challenges was that I made a decision at the time to reject somebody in my life based on wrong evidence and wrong information that I was given by my friends. And I understood one thing about myself is that even if I take the wrong decisions, I stand by them and I stand by the consequences. And sometimes the consequences are not good. And I remember that now years later, the person uh, you know, called me um, uh, years later after they had relocated from South Africa and said, do you know how much I loved you? Do you know how I was honest? Hallelujah. Um, and, and, and I was like, I thought you were playing games with me. My friends told me that you were cheating and all these things. And it was a lie. And I confronted my friends and I, and, and, and this particular friend at the time that I thought said to me, um, you know, Fortune, I was actually very jealous. I was very jealous that you had a relationship with an established person. You had a, a relationship that was looking very nice and rosy. You had a relationship that was moving so smooth. And that's why I discouraged you from dating this person. Actually, this person was worshiping the ground you're walking on and they had such big plans and I did not have that in my life. Do you see the danger of what I'm saying? So there is a danger in giving, uh, uh, you know, sharing Sharing too much information with your friends sometimes sometimes we share information with people because we are thinking they're gonna be happy with us they're gonna rejoice with us and that person might be having a different agenda and a different motive um, am I communicating guys so be careful of giving uh, too much room of other people making decisions on your behalf because they may be steering you away from the right person or they may be steering you. And no matter how much, you know, um, coming back to the situation of people who are in bad situations, some people don't, cannot make the right decision at the time or they just want to wait until they are convinced. So you might be convinced. You might see this person and say, this person is about to die, Pastor. I can see the person is being beaten up every day i know i can see their their partner is busy cheating on them my darling until that person decides to go out of that re situation you there's nothing you can do for them except for praying for them. You can pray and say, God, expedite this decision-making that they need to do. I had a neighbor who um, this lady was married, and um, I think I've told the story that every year in September, the husband would have a mental um, disturbing issue, and he would start beating on the wife, and he would start beating on the parents, but this was something that was uh, due to um, evil manipulation, right? And because of the evil manipulation uh, that was happening, it's like you could, you could see clearly this man was bewitched because he would just react funny in a particular man, right? Um, guys, as you are coming in, please just type, uh, watch your decisions so that I can see that we are still on the same network and we still see each other. Watch your decisions, okay? So this lady said, I came here, I'm married and I've got a certificate to show it. So if my husband chooses to act all crazy and start bringing other women, because what he would do, he would bring other women in the house while she's still there. Now I, I understand the, 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 the disrespect that was happening, right? And I kept on asking the lady because every time she would be beaten up, we didn't have such a high fence at home. She would literally jump over the fence and she would be on our side and she would be bleeding. And I would ask her and I say, sis, why are you allowing yourself to go through this? He says, she, he, he wants to bring another woman to take me out of this house. There's no way I'm living out of this house. The only way I'm living out of this house is when I'm in a coffin. If I am in a box and people will be singing for me. I said, so that is the decision 
you have made. That is the choice that you have made. That you are not leaving this house until you are dead. My God. Watch your decision, Mimi. Watch your decision. Come on, guys. Thank you, guys. Make sure you follow very quickly before we lose each other and everything as well. Okay. So watch your decision. Don't make your decisions based on other op people's opinion. Their advice might be valid. Their advice, you, you listen to their advice. You weigh the advice against the decisions of the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit saying? Do you have peace about it? Because you can't go off blaming somebody after you leave your spouse or your husband or your wife and say, I left them because my friends told me to leave them. No, it's going to have to be your decision. But we, are, we can only pray that you make it before you die. Before something worse happens to you. Talk to me, somebody. And the second type of situation where you don't make a decision is that when you make a decision under pressure. What I've learned, for example, let me make this illustration. I've decided to apply it when I get a sales call. These days, anybody who calls me, you want to sell me something, I tell you, I don't work. And they say, do you know anybody else who can uh, benefit from this? I don't know. I say, all my people don't work. We don't have money. Because I understand the situation I'm in. There is no point in me listening to the whole discussion, ma'am. Good afternoon, good morning, ma'am. I want to tell you about this opportunity that I have. I want to tell you about this contract that is better than the contract. Da, 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 da. And because initially I would say, I already have a cell phone contract. Why do you want to give me another one? No, this one is better. So you are saying that I must now carry two, three contracts at the same time because I was trying to be nice to the sales lady on the phone to, to try to sell me something that I didn't want. Come on, somebody, talk to me. Am I communicating? Watch your decisions. So if, if they're being impossible, just tell them, I'm not working. I don't have money. Watch how quickly that phone goes down because you can see that that person was just being nice for you just to, 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 to put you in the trap of debt. When you make up your mind, I'm coming out of, of, of bad financial decisions. You have been in debt too long. You're going to have to make some decisions and say, I'm not participating. No, I don't want to participate in the survey. Don't give anybody your, your, your information. People will say, I want to send you a free gift and all these things. This is exactly why we put ourselves into trouble. Because other people are now in, in financial difficulties because they gave uh, their identity. This is what they call identity, identity theft. Somebody says, no, I've got this uh, promotion that I'm doing. I'm just sending out free gifts. Here you are. You are regurgitating your whole personal information online. Am I talking to somebody? Can somebody relate to what I'm saying? You have told them your ID number. You have told them the address where you are staying. You have given them all sorts of information because they're going to send you some free cream. They're going to send you some free things. And I'm not dissing anybody's marketing strategy and saying it's a wrong decision for them to give you but watch what you give because then tomorrow you will be the same person who will be saying pastor i was um a duped i was i was a subject of a 419 victim scam and i don't know how they got my, my my information they got it from you you gave them the information it's so easy guys we have to be alert people will call you and will tell you we have noticed that your mtn network or your your sim card has got a problem very subtle they catch you off guard even my daughter fell for this trap he says can you give me the number that has just come in there's a text that has just come in and 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 um we've just noticed that somebody is trying to 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 do a sim swap and and we have just blocked it and it's a fraudulent thing that we are trying to fix it thank you jesus oh god thank you jesus the devil wants to fight, but you will not succeed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not falling for that scam. <laughs> I see somebody has tried a scam that has been going around on TikTok. Hallelujah. So be careful of the information, the identity theft that you are giving out. You know, identity theft is everywhere and you give them all this information. Be careful where you put your documents. Watch your decisions. Are we communicating together? Don't make decisions when you're under pressure. Nobody must sell you anything under pressure. I always walk away from situation and I say, you know what? If I don't feel good about this, I need time out. And if your, if your company cannot give me a day or two to marinate on this decision and to think about this decision, I'm not going to make this decision. I'm sorry. Hallelujah, somebody. 
I'm not going to take this decision and it can wait for me. If God wants me to have that thing, it will wait for me. It will wait for me. I've lived on that principle. If the thing is mine, whether I delay by a day or two, it will not make a difference. But if God tells me it's an instant decision, fortune, everything is okay. You've checked, I've crossed your T's and you've dotted your I's. Then I would make that decision. The third type of situation where you will not make a decision or it's not advisable for you to make a decision is when you are weak. That is why even when you are writing your will, you know, the lawyer will ask you, are you of good mind? Are you of sound mind? They will ask you questions to find out whether you've been put under pressure, that you haven't been sitting and giving, uh, getting uh, decisions from your children and they're putting you under pressure. Ma, you are sick. Daddy, you are sick. Da, 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 da. Um, you know, um, so you need to make a will very quickly. And suddenly somebody has come, one of the siblings has come and put you under pressure and tell you, write the will because this is what I heard. This one, he wants to kill you blah, 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 blah. Be of sound mind. Leave your children out of this nonsense. Go and ask God objectively, God, who are these people that I've given birth to? How do I want to order things? What are the conditions that I want to make? Hallelujah. You are coming out of debt, my darling. That, that person, user 214, you will come out of debt in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord is helping you this morning. That is why this information and this prayer that we are going to make, that we make the right decisions. So when you are weak, you are sick, and you, you know, you don't, you are not really yourself. Don't, don't, don't make any decision at that time. Give yourself a time out. I even make those, there are times when I can feel that my energy, my spiritual energy has been sapped to an extent that I, I know that I shouldn't go on a pulpit. I shouldn't be, be ministering to anybody. So I watch myself and I say, God, I need to replenish. I'd rather make an excuse or I'd rather be late and say, no, sorry, I cannot show up for this thing now. Because I know that anytime I minister the word of God, anytime I minister, whether praying for people or, or in the prophetic, virtue literally leaves you the same way that Jesus says the woman with the issue of the blood of the blood touched at the hem of his garment and virtue left. You can feel it. I can feel it. After every broadcast, I'm so drained. I don't want to talk to anybody. I go into my quiet mode. I can disappear for hours. I don't make decisions when I'm weak because you will ask me for something. I will say yes, but I haven't thought about it. And don't make a decision number four out of hunger. A lot of people have made the wrong decisions out of hunger. They've made the wrong decisions out of hunger because you are hungry, because your family is hungry. Now you find yourself sleeping your way up. Now you find yourself with sugar daddies and sugar mummies. You are making the wrong decision. Hallelujah. It is my prayer for you as you are coming in. Those of you who have just joined us, we will not make the wrong decisions. I want you to type in the comment section one more time and warn somebody and say, watch your decisions. Amen. Before you make a decision, make sure it is in line with your values make sure it is in line with your destiny make sure it is in line with the path which you want to pursue don't make decisions that move you further and further away from your destiny the the, the yesterday when we were having a chat when the, the the people were presenting their businesses um on our tiktok and and they were saying this thing will need sacrifice sometimes you're gonna have to move yourself away from friends sometimes you're gonna have to move away from uh, um you know from the nice life and the nice kind of like you know hangouts that you need to do because you are building a business and it's gonna need sacrifice of time and not only sacrifice of money so you need to know that that thing that decision that person said for the business that i'm building i cannot afford to be visiting my friends every weekend even I'm talking also to those of you who are in the academics to say, watch your decisions that you cannot just be grooving every single weekend and thinking that you're going to achieve high grades. From the first year when I went, I remember I didn't apply for any financial assistance or anything. I came from a single parent home and, but from the first year, I, I was so shocked. I just worked hard. And in the first year, my distinctions and whatever I was achieving, I saw the university giving me credit of the money that was already paid and they suddenly paid for my schooling. And I called my mother. I was excited. I was saying, Ma, they gave me a scholarship. They gave me a bursary and I didn't even apply for it. Why? Because I went there, I applied myself. And by applying myself, 
I just said I'm gonna have to give it my best. I'm coming from a single parent home. I'm not gonna waste my mother's money. My mother had surrendered every single insurance policy to make sure that I make it. He, she made sure, she didn't say, I'm not gonna have money, I'm, I'm, I don't have money to pay for your school. She, she, she was ready to do everything under the sun. And I kept on saying, Ma, things are coming together. You don't have to send me this money anymore. This is what is happening. Do you understand that these things happen? Only if you can apply yourself. Tell yourself I'm going to be more than, I'm going to do more than what is happening. I'm going to apply myself and give the extra. When you go the extra mile, you go into that university degree and you study and you aim for the A's and the A pluses. I don't know where you will fall in. But don't just do the bare minimum because somebody is always watching. I didn't know that somebody was watching. The university was watching and they decided to start paying for my education. I gave myself to everything. I Making the simplest decisions. I don't want to talk too much about myself, but I'm, I'm talking to those of you who are in university who are saying, I don't have money to pay. I don't know. I'm telling you there are opportunities within those institutions that can help you pay for your education. If you can just stand up and be a separate student and you set yourself apart and you do the extra mile and you go the extra mile. Some of the countries that I traveled, I traveled because I was noticed in the university. I would be chosen to go and represent Represent my country in different countries. You often hear me saying Kampala is a beautiful country. How did I go to Kampala? I went to make an argument in the human rights court that was being held in Kampala because why? I chose, it was a simple debate in a class in the university. I gave a presentation that was so awesome. The next thing I received a letter to say, you and other students have been chosen to go and represent us in this type of matter, in this court of law, in Kampala, Uganda. Doors of opportunity started opening up. Am I communicating? I hope this will resonate with somebody. And I'm telling you, there's opportunities. There's opportunities on the internet. If only people can use their data very productively. If you can check, the, I, I, there's so many WhatsApp groups. I'm in a WhatsApp group. I mean, the guy shares so many employment information. There's always an, a job opportunity or a mentorship opportunity or an internship that comes up. It's just that people cannot find the information or they're lazy to find the information or they don't want to expand themselves. But let me come back so that we can pray and close. As I see, time is fast spent. So whenever you're about to make a decision, stop, think, pray, and listen. Four things I gave you, four keys. You need to stop, you need to think, you need to pray, and you need to listen. After you have prayed, you listen out and you say, God, talk to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Shengi. Yes, the attitude, the zeal. You need the right attitude. You need to have the right zeal. It's not always witchcraft that is an issue, guys. If it's witchcraft, I will tell you when it's witchcraft. We will pray against witchcraft that is trying to blind you. Maybe it's witchcraft blinding you to all these opportunities that are there. All I'm saying is that if a person can come from a birth mother who is in a prison and makes it in life and becomes a celebrity... And you are saying, I, I, we stay in a shack. Somebody was born in a prison and they still made it. Somebody was born in a shack and they still made it. Some of the politicians that are before us, they were born in dire conditions, but they still made it. And I'm saying you can make it if you watch your decisions in Jesus' mighty name. If you can just pray, if you can stop, think, pray, and listen, because when you decide to look like, at, at, at that thing, you know, I don't know whether you make a poster. There's this post-it stickers. If you need to paste it somewhere, paste it on your car, paste it in your, uh, in your bathroom. Stop fortune. Think fortune. Pray about it fortune. Listen to the word of God fortune. And then you make a decision. Talk to me, somebody. Don't make bad choices and, and, and try to blame other people. Hallelujah. Some person can decide, okay, I'm going to call this person. This person has upset me. And, and you can feel that you are in a heated mode and you are heated and you know that this is not the right way. Something inside of you will nudge you and tell you this is not the right time to make that call. But people still make those bad calls. 
Hallelujah. You may make it that a choice and say, I'm going to call this person and I'm going to challenge this person right now. I'm going to tell them that they're wrong and I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Why for a change can't you give them the piece of Jesus' mind and don't give them a piece of your mind? Some of the decisions that we have made, even in the workplace, is because we chose to open our mouth at the wrong time. Sometimes choose to walk away until you cool down and you come back and you can then speak to the person when you are calm. But you know, you decide, no, I'm going to call them right now. I'm going to call them out and I'm going to say my mind. I'm going to talk the way I want. And and, and what you thought was going to be an innocent call and you're just going to be articulating how you feel and how you're... The, maybe you should have just timed out and you thought it was going to be an innocent call because you're going to tell them that you don't feel good about this. They treated you the other way. Hallelujah. I, although it might be a, a small thing and you thought it was a small argument... It could have been avoided. It becomes an argument. It was supposed to be an innocent call. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't make the wrong decisions to talk when you're not supposed to talk. Some of the marriages can be saved if, if, if people can time out and say, I'm not going to talk in this situation. I know you are heated and you want to tell the person, I don't like what you did. You can still say it and say, I don't like what you did. I don't, I don't agree with this decision. And I think we need to make time to sit down and talk about this issue. When you are sane and when you are calm, because when you are not calm, you're going to open your mouth, you're going to blabber your mouth, you're going to make decisions, and you're going to say things that are going to be hurtful to the other person that you cannot walk back. You will not be able to walk back those decisions and the things that will come out of your mouth. Am I communicating to somebody? Is that resonating with somebody? And you find that the thing you were fighting about was so small. The disagreement was very small. But because you chose to just run your mouth at the wrong time, it led to a decision that was not supposed to be. It led to a decision of somebody saying, I'm walking out of this marriage. I'm leaving. Wrong decision. And you can't walk it back because of all the things you said. You had a long essay. You now took out all the grudges that you had from last year. Everything that the person offended you about from last year because you did not segment what you were actually uh, uh, um, talking about at that particular moment. The question was about a particular transaction on a bank statement or the question was about why are you not being helpful around the house? I need help. I'm, I'm challenged because I'm coming back from work late. And now you decided to talk about the day that their aunt spoke to you rudely. Their in-laws did this, blah, blah, blah. And they said this. I knew that I married somebody who's useless. Da, 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 da. Do you understand that making the wrong decision person will make a wrong decision at that time and that thing stays for life and words carry power guys words last longer words will last longer words will sit people can talk after and they say i forgive you but the thing will still be lingering and you can still feel there is tension there is tension in the house talk to me somebody let the Lord intervene. I hope this is helping you guys, right? So make the right choices. Hallelujah. Place a reminder for yourself and say, I will not make uh, a temporary decisions uh, that will have a future or a permanent impact. Avoid things that are going to mess up your future. Hallelujah. Stop. Think. Pray and listen. Stop. Come on, say it with me. I'm going to stop. I'm going to pray. I'm going to think and I'm going to listen. I'm going to stop. I'm going to pray and I'm going to think and I'm going to listen. Well, you're welcome to share the broadcast. God bless those who are sharing. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Say a quick prayer. Take a time out. Make a priority to listen to God. There is profit in making decisions that are based on God, making the right decision. Philippians 3, verse 13 to 14, it says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth to those things that are ahead, which are before me. I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in God, in Christ Jesus. I forget the things that are in the past so that I don't meddle them and, 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 and mix them up with what is going on currently so that I don't make the wrong decision in the current situation that I'm in. 
The road that you are going to choose at the moment will determine your end result, where you're going to be ending up in that end place, that destination where you're going. It's the decision that you're going to make today. The decision that you made today that you say, I'm not going to wake up and I'm going to stay in bed. I'm not going to do anything about my destination. It's your choice. It's your delay. It's not a, 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 a delay that you choose that. Shakuria Bahasata. It is important to know that nothing moves forward without a choice. Everything moves forward with the choices that we make. So, Father, I pray for every single person that is on this broadcast that they will make the right decisions, my God. They will take decisions that will move them forward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you wait for chances, the only result you will have is a fall because you are waiting, you are still trying to see, will I make the chance? God bless those who are joining my team. Thank you so much. God bless you things may fall by chance but nothing rises without a choice i said something powerful i said things may fall by chance because you are taking my chances you are taking chances and things can fall apart but nothing will rise without a choice it may fall by chance but it rises by a choice you will rise when you make the right choices when you make the right decisions hallelujah when your decision is right, it determines your destination. The road you choose determines the place you end up. Your choice determines your chances that will open up the opportunities that will come up. The same as it was for the prodigal son. Come on, somebody. Your decision will determine whether you are going to be distinctive distinctive and you it, it will determine whether you 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 have distinction in life whether you are going to be set aside hallelujah you need to take a stand and when you take a stand you will stand out people who take a stand for the right decisions they are standing out in jesus mighty name david was such a man who stood out hallelujah the bible says in the book of first samuel when he talks about uh, david in chapter 17 he says david said to saul let no man's courage fail because of him because of goliath your servant will go out and fight with the philistine he chose to go fight this giant that was busy tormenting the children of israel and he stood out he became a leader because people saw leadership quality it is in him talk to me somebody when you take the right decision it will bring you to a point of deliverance the fact that you have even noticed that there is some kind of witchcraft manipulation that is closing up your eyes to seeing the right decisions that you need to make now you need to make a decision that i'm gonna fight i'm gonna fight in prayer and i'm gonna fight and i'm going to engage myself in spiritual warfare and i'm gonna make sure that i'm delivered from this situation talk to me the right decision will deliver you from an abusive relationship the right decision will deliver deliver you from a toxic environment come on somebody the right decision will cure any frustration that might be coming your way there are choices that you will have to make that will deliver you from the suffering that you're going through no matter how much you pray until you make a decision that i am not meant for suffering and i'm gonna step out of this suffering you have to make the right decision come on somebody tell your neighbor watch your decisions talk to me somebody there was a choice that peter had to make peter in the book of luke chapter 5 had been fishing with his other fishermen and he had said he had toiled all night he didn't catch any fish he was about to check out in the morning and saying i'm going home and i'm going to sleep i didn't catch any fish but if peter did not make the right decision to follow jesus's instruction when jesus said no launch out into the deep let's go back into the water because i'm gonna help you to catch the fish he would not have been a candidate to receive net break net breaking blessings those blessings came because peter made the right decision somebody shout in the comment section i will make the right decisions in Jesus mighty name as you make that decision you will catch a big number of fish come on somebody you need to understand that when you make the right decision and when you're watching your decisions it will undergird your destiny your destiny needs the right decisions hallelujah where you are today I reiterate is the product of your choices that you made yesterday talk to me somebody you need to shout that amen well and make sure that you thunder that amen well you know I'm speaking the truth and I'm speaking to somebody right now that is listening to the sound of my voice where you are today 
today is a result of the decisions that you made yesterday and where you will be tomorrow it will be determined by the choices that you are going to make today you can look at me and think i'm just being cute and all that you can look at me and think you've got all the time in the world look listen you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or next week so i don't want you to delay in, in making the right choices i don't want you to delay in aligning your choices and your decisions with the will of god talk to me somebody my question to you this morning is what kind of a decision are you being faced with what kind of a decision is it a critical decision that you are facing this morning come on somebody the decision to be everything that god wants you to be might be the best decision that you will make today when you know that god meant you for better god meant you for greater god has put a greatness dna in you god has decided to make you the head and not the tail and you're gonna decide i'm gonna be exactly what god has said i am hallelujah you're gonna have to make a vow for god and you're going to make a vow with god and say whether the devil likes it or not i'm going to be everything that god wants me to be come on somebody somebody declare it right now in the comment section and say i'm gonna be exactly what god wants me to be whether the devil likes it or not i'm gonna be what god has set aside for me to be talk to me somebody i'm gonna do exactly that that is why the apostle paul had the audacity and the confidence to say i don't think that i've already achieved the goal but one thing i know is that i i'm not Oh, 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 I don't think myself that I've been perfected in anything that I've done. I don't even count my past successes. But one thing I'm going to make sure is that I'm going to take hold of that perfection which Jesus Christ has given me. I'm going to take hold of that and make it my own. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to charge forward and I'm going to make it and I'm going to reach my goal. Talk to me, somebody. God has given you the tools. The decision to know what it takes to be everything that God wants you to be in life is a decision that is going to set you apart and is going to make you distinctive in Jesus mighty name hallelujah in verse 10 of Philippians 3 he says and this so that I may know him that I have an experience of who he is I have an experience becoming more thoroughly acquainted with him when I learn the word of God when I align myself with the word of God when I begin to understand the word of God when I pray more when I set myself apart not listening to other people's counsels evil people's counsels and I know him more he is going to make remarkable wonders happen in my life miracles will size will start to follow me signs and wonders I am made for signs and wonders the more i'm pushed more towards him he, he's going to make me a wonder come on somebody somebody say i'm a wonder or, uh, i'm a wonder and i'm a miracle hallelujah the wonders of god will start manifesting in your life god bless those who are giving hallelujah God expand you. May the God of wonders shine in your life. May the God of wonders shine in your finances in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. By the power of his resurrection, you will have an overflow. You will have an overflow. You will have an overflow in Jesus mighty name. You're going to have to take decisions to do what it takes to be what God wants you to be. You're going to have to press towards the goal. Come on somebody who is pressing towards the goal. Who is pressing towards that goal in Jesus mighty name. You are a wonder to God. You are a wonder to your nation. You are a wonder to your generation. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Make up your mind that you're going to choose the road that will determine that you get to a beautiful end in Jesus' mighty name. Fight everything that is trying to resist your purpose. Fight everything that is trying to resist your prayer life and your, prayer, your, your, your spiritual growth in Jesus' mighty name. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we make demands this morning. We ask for your help, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. We ask for your help to fulfill our purpose on earth. Father God, we make demands for the release of everything every potential that is inside of every single person that is listening to the sound of my voice in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I declare and I decree my God you are coming through for us in Jesus mighty name thank you Holy Spirit mm. thank you Jesus hallelujah we will follow the instructions hallelujah Lord guide me to the right decision guide me to the right decision my God Help me to understand the choices that I'm making more clearly. Help me to decide and choose the best for myself. Hallelujah. 
Father God, help me as I continue to seek your face this morning, my God, that I will be a significant person. I have not come into this world to just have a birth certificate and a death certificate. I'm going to be significant. I'm going to be set apart. I'm going to be distinctive because I'm going to make the right decisions in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray to you this morning. You are omniscient. You are omnipotent. You are omnipresent. And my God, I know that your way is always the best and your way is what I'm, I'm choosing this morning. Somebody say in the comment section, I'm choosing your ways, oh God. I'm choosing your ways, oh God. I will not fall prey to Satan's devices. I do. I will not fall prey to the deception of the devil. In Jesus' mighty name, I will not make wrong decisions based on satanic agent influences, opinions of, of people that don't have my best interest at heart. In Jesus' mighty name. Through the prayers, through through the prayers, through the Holy Spirit, Father God, I receive your counsel. Let the counsel of God accompany every single decision that you make in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody say it again. Watch your decisions. Watch your decisions. Hallelujah. Some of you are at a crossroad in life right now. You have to make certain decisions and, and you are finding it hard to make that concrete decision. And in, in, in one way or the other, some of you are feeling that fear. You are afraid that if you make this decision, you might miss it because you have made that decision in the past and it didn't lead you to the right path. But God is saying, I am sending my anointing and I'm sending my spirit of guidance, my spirit of wisdom that is going to help you to make the right decision. Somebody say to your neighbor again, watch your decision in Jesus mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. If your spirit is, re is leading you to make a decision that is unclear and you are feeling uncertain, hallelujah. Remember what I said, stop, think, pray, listen, stop, think, pray, and listen. When you notice that you are finding it difficult to make the right sound decisions and you need to consult somebody about that, you need prayers concerning that issue that you can see that these decisions that you are making these days are leading you nowhere. They are leading you down a pit. Stop. Think. Pray and listen. You will seek godly counsel, but you will go back to the Holy Spirit. You will ask the Holy Spirit to validate and you will make the right decision. Hallelujah. Every single day of your life, you need to make the right decisions. Hallelujah. And when you realize that you have missed it, you make a U-turn. Hallelujah. You make a U-turn immediately. Thank you, Jesus. Some decisions will be difficult for you to make, but some decisions will be easy for you to make. Hallelujah. Some decisions might not have an impact that is lasting permanently in your life, but some decisions might do that. So you need to watch your decisions. Thank you, Jesus. When you make good, good decisions, it brings gladness to the heart. You yourself, you are feeling overjoyed. You are feeling that peace that this is a good decision. Some people have entered into marriages. Even on your wedding day, you knew that you were not supposed to go ahead. Even on the day before, you could feel it. But because the invitations had already gone out, you still went out and you still went with the flow. The devil is a liar. You still went with the flow of the things and you thought, okay, cool, let me just do it. Uh, you know, it's just, but it was a permanent decision that you had to think about. This is why it is always to put, uh, it's important to put your way before the Lord. And he says, do not lean on your own understanding. Do not lean on your own understanding. That's Proverbs 30. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Surrender your will to God. What are those things that you will need to look at? Surrender your will to God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. What is that thing that I'm going to have to do, Pastor Fortune? You're going to have to let Christ be the center of your life. Christ must be the center of your life and center of your decisions. What am I going to have to do, Pastor Fortune? You're going to have to activate your faith. Hallelujah. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to him must come believing that he is. And he is the reward of them that diligently seek him. Stop making God an option B. Stop making God as if you say, I believe. You just pop up and you will say a statement on a broadcast. And you will say, oh yeah, pray for me. Da, 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 da. And you don't even believe in what you've asked for. We can believe for you, but are you believing it? Come on, somebody. 
I surrender my will to God. I will activate my faith. I will believe in God and what his promises say. I will make Christ the center of my life. I'm not going to make another human being the center of my life who's going to make decisions for me. Some people have actually been the one that killed the people that are close to them, that love them, because you choose to make them an idol. Some cars... Oh, Jesus, why am I even going there? Somebody, you lost your possessions because you were being too materialistic, because you choose the material things over God. Do you understand the God that you serve? If that thing that was supposed to be a blessing for you, and you chose to make that thing your God, and you lost that thing, my question is, Christ the center of your life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to have to know the word of God and obey the word of God. You're going to have to make the decision that you're going to study the word of God. It's not going to be left to um, just listening to the word of God on a Sunday or just like this with me. You're going to have to spend some time learning the word of God yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, says the Bible. Your word is a lamp that it gives you direction. It gives you the light. It's a lamp unto my feet. Hallelujah. You're going to have to gather knowledge. You're going to have to have a deeper understanding and the, about the decisions you want to make. You're going to have to search the scriptures. You're going to have to search your spirit, man. You're going to have to search through the Holy Spirit in fellowship there. Wisdom is the principal thing. We're going to seek the wisdom of God. Wisdom is the principal thing. In all you're getting, get wisdom, get understanding. Do you understand what you're doing? Do you understand what you're getting yourself into? That you are not making this decision under pressure. Those of you on Mara Official, I can see you are starting to have challenges with your broadcast. Please come and jump in and, and follow us on For Fortunel Online. Somebody quickly make sure that you are putting that, that, that handle. Come and join me on the TikTok here on Fortunel Online. I don't know what is happening. We'll have to choose another device to use next time because I noticed that after some time, you get blocked out. How are you going to make sure that you are making the right decisions? You're going to have to ask the right questions. Ask questions. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. There is safety when you have cons consulted. That is why even doctors don't mind if you, you get a second opinion. It's only a doctor that is pompous and, and, and that thinks that they don't need a second opinion. If you feel that something is wrong, something is nudging you, something is off, even wherever you are planted on or whatever ground you are planted on and the Holy Spirit nudges you and say, no, 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 I know I've been fellowshipping for a while, but I think God is saying something else. You can seek the counsel of the Holy Spirit to confirm or, or to show you what is going on. Some people have been stuck because they are on unfruitful grounds. That's the honest to God's truth. If, if, if you are in an environment, you are in a fellowship, not even going to use the word church or even in a church, and all you can see is negativity, and everything that comes out of your mouth is negative, everything you are talking, you are talking badly about the pastor, you're talking badly about the leadership, and you cannot find anything constructive, you say, I've done everything, I've prayed for them, I have spoken... There's nothing you are receiving there. That's the honest truth. You cannot receive from a vessel that you do not respect. Honor begets honor. Honor is the one that will release. The anointing does not. There is a protocol in every place where you go. I'm not saying that you, God did not show you the wrong things. If God shows you certain things that are wrong and you've been there for years and the only thing you have been complaining and you're saying, I'm not growing spiritually, make a choice. You can't receive from somebody you don't respect. People can come on this broadcast and listen to me. And if they don't respect the, the oil on my head, it's not going to work for them. I can, I can make a declaration. I can pray for you. But if you don't believe that I've got the anointing and God can use me in that way, it's not going to work for you. And don't waste your time. If you feel like you want to bounce about, if people don't have the resilience and, and, and the patience to work a situation because people don't want to work hard. People, people just want quick fixes. 
some people will stop on this broadcast and they will say ah who is this one they want us to pray they, ah, let me go find somebody where i will just say i will type my name and i will just say something and i will be prophesied and i'm off on my way and i will go and do whatever i want it ain't gonna be permanent we'll still be here you'll find us here we'll be waiting for you i honor every man and woman of god whoever comes into the broadcast i give them the due respect God uses them as vessels in their own way and anybody else. If that is what you want, you go for it. If it's working for you, you go there. But you cannot be swayed between two poles, up and down, up and down, up and down. You're going to have to choose and say, okay, God, I'm going to work. I'm going to work this. I'm going to, I'm going to work this until, until I see results. You know what spiritual growth is required, right? Pastor Tonda, good morning. You know what is required. I'm not going to tell you not to read the word of God. I'm not going to tell you that it's enough for me to have prayed for you. That you go, you're going to run. No, no, you're going to have to learn the word of God. There's a day I'm not going to be there. Yes, Numaiza, God bless you. Thank you for noticing that and confirming it. I have I have days when I can, I can feel that spiritually i'm sapped out on that day you're gonna call and you're gonna send a message and i won't be able to respond what are you gonna stand on you're gonna have to stand on the word that you would have familiarized yourself with you're gonna have to stand on the word and prayers that i have taught you that is what making disciples is all about so sometimes some of you may find it very boring and you might want to skip even the 10 o'clock sessions and you'll be saying, oh, no, 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 I don't want to, it's just teaching and that's for pastors maybe. No, 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 it's not. We're teaching you what God has said you will be able to do. He says in the last days, you will dream dreams and see visions for yourself. Don't you want to know how to interpret them for yourself so that you can know whether God is confirming certain things so that you can stop saying there's false prophets. There's not, there can't be a false prophet without a false Christian. Guys, do you understand that? If you are saying there's false prophets and you were duped by a false a, a prophet, my next question is what was the activation level? What was the radar of the holy spirit in you at that time we've made the same mistakes before and we know when we were manipulated we made the choice to shift at the time so i'm saying i'm challenging you to grow your spirit man to go and speak in tongues and build yourself up in your most holy faith by reading the word of god by challenging things that are coming to you when the prophetic word comes out you can know whether it is for you or not and you can receive it and you can run with it and you know when somebody is off so that you can stop letting people that you don't know and you you if you feel you don't know how to to discern evil spirits you don't allow people to lay hands on you talk to me somebody if the holy spirit does not confirm that this person who's standing in front of me is a man or a woman of god you don't know you don't allow that person to lay hands on you but you can only know it when you spend time with the holy spirit because something will tell you i'm not standing up I challenge my, 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 my students and I tell them, you, when, you, when you are in a church environment, right? When I, when I teach my, my, this, in the school of the spirit, that when you say amen, what are you saying amen to? Did you hear what was said? Because some people have stood in agreement with people that, that were saying nonsense. The doctrine was wrong. Some people don't even know what is wrong doctrine because they don't spend time in the word. That is why you can be in a church for years and the doctrine is so wrong. It has nothing to do with the word of God. But you kept on saying amen and it, uh, amen means uh, so shall it be. I stand in agreement with you. It shall come to pass in that way in my life. And that is exactly what has been coming to pass. That wrong doctrine. And that's why things have not been working because nobody wanted to sit down and check the word of God for themselves.
Somebody can make, can, can be so fatigued and say something that is wrong. Just because it was said from the pulpit, it don't mean it's right. Somebody has, and I've seen this sometimes. Somebody has got a beautiful voice and they're standing in front and they're singing, they're leading praise and worship and they make a statement just because the music and the keys were right, the strings were right and the person says something and the person says amen. In that moment of worship, you are drunk with the music. You are drunk and you're saying the Holy Spirit is moving. Yes, the Holy Spirit was moving because you were keyed in. The words of the song were nice and everything. But then this is why sometimes it's good to stay in your lane and just do what you are called to do. If you are called to be a, a, a music worshiper, be a music worshiper before you start teaching us the wrong doctrine. Don't dabble and, and if you feel you are called to be a, a preacher or a, a teacher of the word, go and learn the word of God before you come and teach it. Go and learn it for yourself and go and, 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 and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you exactly those revelations, something you can justify. Something you can go back to the Bible. If somebody says, but you said this, where is it in the Bible? I can be able to point it out. Because I'm a teacher of the word. I'm not going to compete with somebody with a high note when they are singing on stage. I know when I sing off. I know when I sing on key. I don't, I don't play in the wrong fields. That's why I'm saying some of some of the people have got giftings and talents and, and everything from the Holy Spirit. And you need to make up your mind and say, you know what? If I don't know enough of it, I'm not going to dabble in it. For the sake of wanting a title, for the sake of saying, I want to be called apostle. I want to be called prophet. I'm going to leave that thing alone until you are trained in the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit train you. Where you don't understand, you tell, you know, one of the things that, when I wanted an explanation of how I dream and my visions and my, my, my teacher mentor at the time says, if you're not sure if it's the Holy spirit that is showing you that thing, rather say, I feel in my spirit. If you are not sure. So because you don't want to talk nonsense and lies about the Holy spirit, my, I feel in my spirit. So he said, if you are not sure, he said, and he told us there will come a time that you will know that it is the Holy Spirit confirming through your spirit. Then you can say it with confidence when you are saying that my, I feel, I hear the word in my spirit that says one, two, three, but people these days, they just want to say anything, anyhow, if you're not sure if it's the Holy Spirit, you have not been trained to know how the Holy Spirit operates or talks. Nobody wants to avail themselves for training. And I'm not saying that this is some kind of initiation like uh, Sangomas would be initiated or anything like that. But I'm saying that there's a reason why there's, a, there's, there's, there's safety in the counsel of others who have gone before us. How did they do it? What mistakes did they do? What is the Bible saying concerning this? I'm availing myself for teaching. I go to the classes. I go back home. I sit down. Holy Spirit, does this thing make sense? How do I handle prophetic words? Some people are just... Drrr. You just hear something and, 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 and you just say something recklessly and somebody collapses and has a heart attack. You are not being tactful. But if you are trained, you know what to say at the right time. It's not a competition to say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a sniper. I'm a prophetic sniper. No, no, no. I'm going to say, no, 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 no. Sometimes the Holy Spirit says, just say a name. As you say the name, somebody is confirming in their spirit. It says, yes, that's me. Sometimes I don't have, in, you don't have to say the whole thing that is happening. I once went to a, a, a meeting and I was so embarrassed because the person was called and their wife was called at the same time. And it was revealed that your husband is cheating on you. And I said, God, that cannot be prophetically, ethically correct. But who was I? And what did I do? I said, my ears cannot listen to this. And I walked out. I walked out. So guys, we will make the right decision. Watch the decisions that you make. If you find yourself in a messy situation, if you find yourself in a messy gathering where they are just doing anyhow, walk out. If you came there with common transport, ask for the keys. I'm going to wait in the car. I'm going to put on my music and I'm going to listen to worship. I'm going to listen to the word that will make sense to me. I'm not going to sit here just because somebody is screaming amen and running up and down on stage and giving me the wrong doctrine. 
How will you know the wrong doctrine? You're going to spend time in the word of God. You see how long we've been here now? People have been waiting for me to prophesy. I may even go off the broadcast and not prophesy. And I will not be shaken. My husband is, is very, is what they would call in the pro prophetic sniper. Do you know one day he decided, he said, I'm not going to prophesy. I'm not a Sangoma because it's like Christians just come these days and they just want to say, prophesy me, man of God. Huh? You don't want cancel what God is saying about your life. You just want a prophetic word. What God is going to do like this as if you are going, what do you call those people that consult that globe thing? Fortune tellers. You can't, you can't approach God like that. Come and tell my fortune. fortune. I want a fortune teller. No, 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 no. Sometimes we keep quiet for a reason. And God tells you, let them sit. Let them sit and listen to the word. You, you can't. It's, it, it, that's what I'm saying. False prophets equals false Christians. False Christians who want quick things and they want people to say, you, you want to go to a fortune teller. You want to know. Show me my future. Kadia bahasata kadia. Thank you, Ambra Pile. God bless you. He will reveal his word in due season, in due time. He will show it to you. Mara official, I'm going to restart your life again so that you, we can get um, you guys on board again. Thank you, Jesus. I hope this is resonating. I hope this is resonating with somebody. I want to. I could sit here the whole day and be telling people's business and be telling you exactly what I what you want to hear. Not all of you, of course. It's only some people. That's why I'm not shaken. My aim is to get you to the end of the line and to get you to your destiny point and things are working for you and think you can say... Pastor Fortune taught me the word. Pastor Fortune gave me the direction. Any of my sons and daughters, where I, if you want references, I will give you the reference. Go and ask them and they will tell you if there's one thing that she will do is she, to drum the word of God inside of you. She will drum the word of God inside of you. I noticed many years ago that the healing anointing was strong on me. But I didn't... You need to understand that there's dimensions and stages where God releases you for doing something. I, I was birth, Everything of mine was birthed in the healing ministry. God ordered my steps to go where I was trained. To nourish and to channel my gift. I did not sit and say, oh, I noticed. I've seen the dreams. I've seen my, myself healing uh, people. No. I wanted to find out more. Because there were battles in the spirit realm that were contending for my, for, for my giftings. I had churches that approached me. Churches from different churches that have a, 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 a bit of African mixture. Um, as some of you in South Africa, you know the churches I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Red breed, I'm not saying that we will not prophesy. If the Lord has a prophecy that has to do with the nations, we will speak. But the question is whether the people are there to hear and listen to it and heed the calling. Are the people there who are going to check it against the scriptures because there's a confirmation? Don't be afraid, Smusiso. Don't be afraid. Everybody, they come and you, you, we've noticed. Do you know what it means to just be walking in the street and somebody says, I notice there's a star on your head. I notice that you are able to do one, two, three. You need to come to this place so that you can be trained. You must not be tossed to and fro and be called back and forth. Go and seek the Lord's direction. Steffi, you need to learn more about God. That is why these days we are making a mockery of it and we are saying every, it's like everybody's been called and initiated into uh, being uh, 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 Sangomas and like it's going out of fashion. These are just people who need a direction. 
maybe they didn't have to go to be a Sangoma. Maybe they had to go and be somebody else and, and be trained and, and, and no, nourish their gift. Avail yourself for training. Stop sitting and confusing yourself. Let me make the right decision. Somebody say, watch the right decisions. Let me close. My God. Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 30, 21 says, And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way of the Lord. Walk ye in it when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. This is the way of the Lord. Follow the way of the Lord. Am I communicating the truth? Is this, is this sinking in? Is this sinking in? I know some of you, you, when you text me, you want me to tell you, you want the quick fix. I'm not um, a fortune teller. I know my name is fortune, but I'm not a fortune teller. And you don't want to know. And while you are waiting to know what is going to happen next week, and God is saying, fix the foundations, fortune. Let's deal with their root foundations. Let's deal with it so that by the time you tell them what's going to happen tomorrow, that they would have fixed the foundation. But people don't want to fix the foundation. They just want to deal with the symptom. And that's why doctors get rich. Doctors, you come. You come to the doctor. Instead of telling you what caused the problem and what you need to stop eating so that you don't have to come back to him, he gives you medication to deal with the symptom because he wants you to come back again and again and again. While the undertakers are rejoicing and they're saying, let them eat like crazy people. Undertakers will make parties because they want to make sure they are selling their coffins. They want to bury you. Jesus, are you ready to pray? Is this resonating with you? Is somebody learning something? I hope you learned something. Hallelujah. How's my time? We're still good on Facebook. We're still good on YouTube. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, we decree and we declare that you have been our help in ages past. We bless your name for your mercies and your grace over our lives. We bless your name for your grace over our family in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Guys, make sure you follow the account and you turn on the notification bell. You don't miss me. I'm live every single day of the week, 5 a.m. And we are going to go into the word and we're going to pray. We're going to win because we are going to be applying everything in synchronization. My One of my sons always says, holistically, holistically, the holistic gospel. Amen, somebody. King of glory. <clears throat> we appreciate you. We appreciate you for your kindness in our lives. We appreciate you for your kindness in our families. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for every single person who's at the sound of my voice right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we ask for your mercy in all areas of our life. We ask for your forgiveness for all the wrong decisions that we have made in Jesus' mighty name. In times past, Father God, forgive us. Lord, we ask you that you show us mercy in the ways where we have missed and we did not follow the path that you had set aside for us. And God, that you're going to help us to follow the right path in the name of Jesus Christ from now. Father, take us out of all the negative consequences that we have found ourselves in by virtue of having taken wrong decisions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Father, I ask that you revive the love for you, my God, from that person who's sitting at the sound of my voice. Uh, revive their love and their salvation and, 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 and revive their, their zeal and revive their hunger to make the right decisions, to consult you, to put you in the right decisions in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you to everybody who's at the sound of my voice, Lord, that they will take their will and let your will be theirs, my God. They will bring their will to you and you will give them your will father god there will be alignment and there will be prosperity as a result in the mighty name of jesus christ father we ask you this morning we pray and we say god show us the way we are ready to follow your ways leave us out of any 
obscurity, any form of darkness in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I ask that let your light shine upon our paths in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The path of God, the light of God will shine on your path in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we reject every satanic pressure that can push us in making irrational decisions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree and I declare that to everybody who's at the sound of my voice, they will not make a temporary decisions in for that will have a future and permanent impact in Jesus' mighty name. I decree and I declare that they will not make irrational decisions. Father God, Father, I stand in the gap and as I stand in agreement with them, Lord, I decree and I declare that we reject every load, every evil load of depression that is resulted from past decisions that are bad decisions to create deaths in their lives. Father God, we reject the load of depression from their lives. We uproot depression in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we pray, Lord, that you open their eyes, oh God, to see the path that you have outlined for them towards their destiny in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May we work therein and may we walk therein in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for filling us with your spirit that we may be able to discern what is your will for our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for frustrating every counsel of every witch, every wizard that has tried to make us go into error. Their counsel shall not stand. I decree and I declare it. Every counsel of every witch, wizard, any Inyanga, any Juju priest that may have been consulted, my God, their counsel shall not stand as long as that counsel is trying to get us into error. My God, I decree and I prophesy their counsel will not stand in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every negative prophecy that has been pronounced from their mouth that will make us go into a doom situation. My God, I cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My God, as I, I pray for those who are at the sound of my voice and those who will agree with me right now, Father God, we reject every single spirit of error that has been projected to us from the altars of darkness. Every spirit of error. Come on, somebody reject it with me. Make sure you are declaring it in that comment section. Father, I reject every spirit of error. I reject the spirit of error that has been projected from whatever dark altar, whatever dark shrine in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we decree that any satanic cycle that uh, is trying to repeat itself, uh, it will not repeat itself anymore in Jesus mighty name. Any satanic cycle that was in our mother's or our father's life in our previous generations, my God, they will re not repeat themselves in our lives and they will not repeat themselves in our next generation and in our children. Father, we cut it off right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we frustrate every evil orchestration over our lives. Anything and anybody who is trying to make any evil orchestration, Father, we reject all Operations of manipulative spirits in our lives. Every monitoring spirit is rejected in Jesus' mighty name. Every operation of the manipulative in our lives is rejected in Jesus' mighty name. Our decisions will not be manipulated in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We receive the power of discernment to know the right things from the wrong things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we receive the grace to make the right decisions in Jesus' mighty name. We will make the right decisions decisions concerning our marital lives. We will make the right decisions concerning our business, our families, our careers, every single decision concerning our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we will make the right decisions. Come on, somebody shout a resounding amen. Father, I declare and I decree that we will not lose your blessings for our lives through wrong decisions. I decree to everybody who's at the sound of my voice, my God, everybody who's at the sound of my voice and the influence of my voice, you will not lose the God God's blessings, my God, in Jesus' mighty name. You will not make wrong decisions that will lead you to a path of making wrong decisions in Jesus' mighty name. By the oil on my head and in my life, I frustrate the powers of hell that have been working against your peace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every single power of satanic agents that has been saying that you will not experience peace, I reject it in Jesus' mighty name. I uproot it in Jesus' mighty name. 
I come against every power that has been saying that you will not have a clarity of mind. I uproot that power right now in Jesus' mighty name. You will not be confused. You will have clarity of mind and you will make the right decisions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree that they will begin to work in the power and authority over issues in their life with the power that you have bestowed on them. Father God, as believers, they will exercise their believers' authority in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord. We are receiving the grace to make the right decisions in our careers and in our finances in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, let the grace begin to make right every single decision in every critical aspect of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we, re we receive the grace to make the right decisions even in our spiritual matters in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I declare and decree to everybody that is in a workplace that in their offices, my God, they shall be known for making the right decisions in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree and I declare that they shall be the solution provider to the problems of many in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you for answered prayers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the church of God said amen and the Christians said amen. Resound that amen louder. Shout that amen louder. Thunder that amen louder. Let the witches know that you have made the right decisions in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, I declare that you are blessed and I declare you will make the right decisions from today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I bless you who are on Facebook and on YouTube, those of you who tuned in, I declare that your paths are no longer crooked, they are straight. You will make your right decisions. You will stop, you will think and you will pray and you will listen to the voice of God. The wisdom of God will operate in your life. Those of you also on TikTok, the same declaration I give to you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you are following the subscriptions and and you are subscribing to the channel that you are in thank you for those who are subscribers even on tiktok those who have gifted may the lord expand your territories may the lord expand your bank accounts may the lord grant you favor in your investments in everything that you are doing in jesus mighty name may the lord grant you every single financial breakthrough you came here believing for may the lord grant you every favor in terms of any healings that you came here believing for in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord expand you. Maybe you be rooted in the Holy Spirit. Maybe you be rooted in the word of God. In Jesus' mighty name, I declare and I decree that you are rising and you are shining. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can somebody give Jesus a shout of praise, somebody? Somebody give Jesus a shout of praise. Somebody give Jesus a shout of praise. Somebody give Jesus a shout of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to ask you that before you jump off the broadcast, you make sure that you give me a follow and you turn on your notification bell. I see you tomorrow again at 5 a.m. Go and do the work. You will see the results. I ask that you also follow the account on Mara Official. Follow the YouTube link so that the challenges that we had today, that you are able to jump off if in case there's a shrink in terms of the views or there's a shrink in terms of uh, network issue related and all that. So let's make sure that we are following each other make sure you follow turn on the notification bell please also subscribe to the youtube channel when you want to watch the replay you will find it on my youtube and you will also find it on dr mara's uh, youtube as well so make sure that you do that for me go to uh, pastor fortune you click on the link there and you will see there's an icon that says instagram and when you click on instagram you can follow me just by clicking on instagram and when you click on that very one that says instagram there's one that says youtube you click on youtube and you just click subscribe you like the videos and god bless you and god increase you thank you so much thank you so much facebook and youtube i'm signing out god bless you i love you guys